There were two guys in yeshiva, one learning very good and the other one not so good. Also, the one that learns good, he has a great character and personality, and the other one is not exactly tzaddik. Everyone around the tzaddik is telling him, get rid of this friend. He's not for your level. Get rid of him. And he kept answering, why should I get rid of him? He never hurt me. He never did anything bad to me. Maybe he's not into Torah so much, but after all, he, do, he never did anything bad to me. What, just one day to tell a person, you're not in my level, get out of here, I don't want to be your friend? But they tell him, his mother, his father, his friends, get rid of him, it's for your own good, he only holds you back, please, find an excuse. He refused to get rid of him. One day, they became 18. The Chacham, he goes now to a great yeshiva. In the next two, three years, he's going to learn somewhere else. And the other ones doesn't go to yeshiva. He goes to get a job. He decided to be a stockbroker, to learn how to invest in a stock market. And they never saw each other again, because he went to yeshiva, and he went to business, and automatically, after a few weeks, you know how it is. A few years later, they met on the street. The guy went to Wall Street, or to the Israeli stock market, but he's already now fancy, expensive suit, expensive watch. You can see right away, it's not the Avrech he used to be. And he comes, and he says, how are you? Wow, I'm so happy we meet. What do you do? Same thing, in Kolel learning from morning to night. Got married, I have children, Baruch Hashem. What's with you? Got married, I have children. And Baruch Hashem, I made a lot of money. What do you do? I invest in the stock market. I have customers. I make off their money. I invest my own money. Baruch Hashem, Hashem was kind to me. I'm making a lot of money. And then he took out his last statement. And he said to him, you see, I started this month with this amount of money. And look how much I made this month. Wow, $25,000 a month. Amazing. How do you do it? And every month was like that. The month before, the month before. You see? Look, it's beautiful. So the Shiva guy, his eyes opened up. He said to him, listen, if I'll take a loan, $50,000 from the bank, towards my house, I take a loan, would you invest the money for me? I'll go to the bank, i ask them to give me a loan. I want you to invest for me. Maybe you can help my parnasa. We're not doing so well. One day I have to marry the kids. So he said to him, listen, we're friends. Let's stay friends. I don't want to, you know, be responsible for your money. So he said to him, no, no, don't worry. You don't have to be responsible for my money. I know you're doing me a favor, but based on what you say, you only made money since day one. Why do I have to worry about? You don't want to help your brother to finally one day to a man to make a living? Wow, you gave me all this speech and now you don't want to help me? Okay, okay, I'll help you. Go get the money and call me. He went to the bank, he took a loan. True story, it happened in Israel. He took a loan. He called him the next day. He said, my office is in this place. Come bring the money. He went, he gave him the money. He said, I'm opening you an account. Sign here, sign here. Tomorrow I'll invest all the money. Tomorrow, guess what happened? The big stock market crashed. I think it was 1987 or, the, or, a, year, or a few years later. The market crashed. People were jumping from buildings. People were killing themselves. Horrible. I had a guest in my house that had $18 million invested in a market and he went to Israel. Back then, it wasn't like today. Everything with text. You know, automatically you do online. Talking, <laughs> it was rotary phone. You have to call and give an order, and a few minutes later, someone will buy or sell the stocks for you. It wasn't like today. Everything was in slow motion. This person didn't even know. He said, ah, the, the, the market keeps going higher, higher every day. When I come back from America, I know how much I made. In the meantime, the market crashed. When he came from America, 18 went down to 6 in a few days. 
He took the money, he bought building in Brooklyn, and that's what saved him. Some of his money he saved this guy. He lost a lot of money. In, in his trip to Israel and come back, almost all his money got wiped out. So this guy, everybody on the news in Israel now talking about the market crash, what are we going to do? So he's trying to call his friend. <coughs> the phone is ringing and ringing. No answer. He went to the office, locked. One week, poor guy, from morning to night. Imagine how he was able to learn Torah. He borrowed $50,000 from the bank, and the next day the market crashed. And he doesn't even know what happened with his money. After one week of calling, the guy picked up. Say, listen, I know what happened. I'm not calling to complain, please. I just want to know if anything left. He said to him, oh, it's you. Don't worry. I didn't have a chance to invest your money yet. It's all in my drawing cash. You can come today, tomorrow. I'm sorry, I, I had to run away. People want to kill me. I lost millions of dollars. It's very bad for me now. My life is finished. I got wiped out, I owed fortune. I don't think I'll ever be able to come out of my situation. But you, you're lucky. See, Hashem saved you from learning Torah. I was busy the next morning, I didn't buy anything. Your money is still in my drawer, you can come get it. Wow, I cannot believe it. I'm so sorry for you, but I don't know what I would do. Where would I ever pay this 50,000 as an Avrech Kolel? He said to his wife, you see, you should never listen to Lashon Hara. Everyone told me, get rid of this guy. How many people would tell me I did not invest your money in a situation like this? Look how he stayed honest to me and loyal. Big shock for everyone. He went and he gave him back the money. So that was the end of it. Thank you. I appreciate it for being honest. A few years later, one day he gets a phone call. How are you? Baruch Hashem, slowly, slowly, I started from zero. Hashem, help. I'm, I paid almost everything I owe, and I make some money. Baruch Hashem, it's better days now. <coughs> I need you to come to my office. I have to give you something. What do you have to give me? He thought maybe he's suing me now. Who knows? Come, come. Don't ask questions. Goodbye. He comes to his office. He gives him an envelope. He said, this is yours. So what's that? He said, $70,000. He said, well, what do you mean it's mine? He said, this is your profit. He said, what do you mean? You gave me back my money already. He said, no, let me tell you the true story now. When, I, when you gave me the money, before you even left the office, I already invested it. The next morning, everything crashed. I didn't pay to sell anymore. There was only a few hundred dollars left from the $50,000. I say, from here, what can go wrong? I leave it. One day, maybe we'll come back. And I completely forgot about this account. Completely. I had my own, the big accounts that I was in big problem. I was focusing on them, trying to do some things. Completely, I forgot about this account. Accidentally, one day, I checked in my computer. I see that I have in the account $140,000. How can it be? It's on my name. I opened it up. I saw that that's the stocks that I bought from you. Another company bought them out. The news came on the market that they're about to be bought. It started to go higher and higher like crazy. And I didn't even know about this. I forgot about this name. And now this is your half. This is, no, this is the entire profit. This is your money. He said to him, I'm very sorry. I cannot take it. Say, come on, I heard that you, your daughter is coming up, that she got engaged. You're going to need the money for the wedding. Take it. He said, how can I take it? You bought me out. He said, no, I didn't buy you out. I lied to you. I told you that I never bought the stocks. I felt bad for you. You're learning Torah. How can I take your money? I gave you my own money, but I actually never touched your investment. Your money made you your money. So he said to him, no, no, I'm very sorry. You gave me back my money. The day you gave me back the money, you actually bought my investment. He said, no, that's not true. I gave you the money as a gift. There's nothing to do with the investment. Imagine an argument like this. 
They ended up in Bedin. For the Bedin to say, what's going on here? This story ended up in Bedin. Sometimes when you think this friend is not in your level, think again. You never know. Just because he doesn't look like you or he doesn't know how to learn like you, he may count in Shamaim a lot higher than you. You don't know. Sometimes an ordinary person, the little that he does, it's already huge in Shamaim. Because Hashem knows where he's from, where he came from, how he grew up, what poison they injected to his brain from day one until now. For instance, sometimes people say in religion, don't listen to the rabbis, it's a brainwash. So one time a person saw, sent me a message, he said, Rabbi, what do you tell people that say, don't listen, it's a brainwash? It's Tifat Moach in Hebrew, brainwash. So I answer, tell them, indeed, it's a very positive, great brainwash from all the dirt that people like you injected in your brain we have to come and clean it, and it's not easy. To clean the brain from all the garbage, <laughs> sometimes take years. It may take years. 